Shout a loud hallelujah. Let the person who wants to receive the greatest breakthrough here today shout in loudness hallelujah. May the Lord God bless you real good. May the Lord God bless you real good. Brought you here to bless your life. May the Lord God bless you. Talk to somebody and shout it loud. Real good. Real good. Turn to another person and shout it loud. Real good. Real good. Turn to another person and shout it. Real good. Real good. Yourself, yourself. Oh, God bless me, real good, real good, real good. Brought me here to bless my life. Lord, oh, bless me, real. Shout hallelujah! Raise up your right hand to the heavenly. And declare this loud and clear. Say, power of favor. Locate my life. In the name of Jesus. Power of favor, locate my life. In Jesus' name we pray. Every authority of darkness posting against my progress. Can you shout this loud? Scatter by fire. Command the authority of darkness to scatter. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Anywhere I go, darkness and sorrow shall flee. Can I hear you making that confession? Can I hear you making it louder than that? Can you shout it louder than that? In the name of Jesus. Darkness and sorrow shall flee. In Jesus name we pray. Praise the Lord. It's a very important announcement for all the sisters in this service. Immediately we close the service as a short prayer meeting for sisters to address seven things. So it's important, compulsory for all the sisters to wait for the prayer meeting. We want to address number one, the spirit of death. We want to address blocked roads. We want to address battles in the dreams. We want to address the arrows of the wicked. We want to address troubles by witchcraft forces. We want to address this spirit of increased battles when good things are coming. And we want to address infirmities. Seven things to address for sisters immediately we close the service. So make sure you gather here very quickly immediately after this service. Let's rise up on our feet please. As we close our eyes, raise our two hands to the Lord and sing this song loud and clear. Holy Spirit, be my comforter. Holy Spirit, 
dream come true. Hallelujah. As I walk along the way, the way is now. Oh yes, Holy Spirit. Be let the living water flow. That I can climb for Jesus climbs it all. I snow mountain that I can climb for Jesus climbs it all. I snow mountain that I can climb for Jesus climbs it all. Oh, I am complete. Oh, yes, complete. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Father, we thank you for a time like this before you. And we thank you for the gathering of your eagle said. Accept our thanks in Jesus' name. This morning, Lord, open our understanding. Lay your hands upon our lives. Move us. From where we are to where you want us to be. It is written. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagle. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. We bind and cast out every fainting spirit. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Let's have a seat. God bless you. Yeah, welcome once again to the school on Sunday. Where again we have tons and tons of questions here. And we see how much of it we can take. So please sir. Does Mountain of Fire and Miracles Ministry name a newborn baby where both the two parents have not been joined together as husband and wife? It's against the doctrine of Mountain of Fire and Miracles Ministry. We do not carry out such naming ceremonies. We do not carry out weddings, uh, naming ceremony for couples who are not properly married. Neither do we carry out naming ceremony for second wife, third wife, any wife different from the first one. And generally, as a rule, if we, if we are able to know any pastor who does it, they are placed on immediate suspension. Praise the Lord. So it's not our doctrine. We don't do that here. Let that be very, very clear. 
Any child born outside wedlock is declared by scripture to be a bastard. Because he's born outside wedlock. So you better be very careful. If you are the person who wrote that you've been having wet dreams in spite of your prayers, please wait and see us. Somebody wants us to explain the title of the new book, Prayer of Jehu. By prayer of Jehu, we mean the totality of prayers against witchcraft forces. Also, if you are the person who said that after some serious prayers, somebody was beating you up in the dream, kindly see us too. Says, sir, my daddy was a Muslim before he died. And before he died, he told all the children that we should call him anytime we're having difficulty that he will answer. Our elder sister always call him and he answers. Jill, what can I do now? Don't call him. It's not him you are calling. It's familiar spirits. The Bible says it's given unto man to die only once. After that, judgment. Whatsoever is talking to you as a dead person is not the dead person. It's a familiar spirit pretending to be the person. Can a man who has married so many wives and divorced all the wives be a worker in the church? No. Someone said, my first baby of about three months fell from the back while I was backing him. Please, what can I do? Please see us after the service. How do I know that I have the call of God upon my life? You go to the bookshop, there are various books on the call of God, and you can know. This man said, 2006, he slept with a woman outside marriage. And he repented that it has never happened against his then. Said so the wife at home has no knowledge about this. Sir, do you think I should tell her now? I'm afraid it may break the home. See us after the service. If I close my eyes for a few seconds, I see so many pictures. God has a calling for your life, so go to the members of the prophetic club to help you develop it. A lady said that her boss was going out with the secretary. But when she got married, she told the man she was no longer interested in the situation. But the lady is still supplying girls to the boss. She has stopped sleeping with the boss. She's supplying girls from university to the boss. This is what men do in the place of work sometimes to get promotion. Is this Christianity or is this a sin? What is the answer? The argument is that they said everybody is doing it. It's wrong. Why is it that the schools established by Mountain of Fire are always charging high fees? Well, if 14000 is very high, then it's very sad. Because we've brought it down to the minimum. Unless, of course, there are other charges that I don't know about. Sir, can one take a fresh palm wine with bitter leaf or dry gin? Google you have not had a question. To rub on the body as medication for measles. He didn't say he wants to drink it. He said he wants to use it to rub the body for measles. There's nothing wrong in that one. It's when you start drinking it, that's a problem. What can one do if any time you wake up at midnight to pray, you go blank? It's a serious matter and you need to pray about it. Or you get your prayer book and start from somewhere. This person wants to know why we do not use wedding rings to wed people in Mountain of Fire. The Mountain of Fire does not use wedding rings to join people together. Wedding rings can be stolen. Wedding rings can be jinxed. Wedding rings can be manipulated. And the origin of it is questionable. So in Mountain of Fire, we say, with this Bible, I do wed. We join people with the word of God which shall not be broken. You don't join them with rings. Sir, is it good for Christians to drink concussion as medicine? Or to drink herbs for medicine? Well, if you want to drink herbs for medicine, make sure you are the one that cut the leaves yourself. And you are cooking it yourself. But if you ever venture into the market to buy things to put together, you will certainly pollute yourself. Actually, as a matter of honesty, anybody can eat anything they like. You can eat lizard if you like. You can eat cockroaches. It's not a sin. But be careful. So you don't harm yourself. Geo, sir. Say, I'm hypertensive. And I was instructed by my doctor to take 
a shot of hot drink every morning. That your doctor needs deliverance. Sir, if during the course of evangelism, you run into people in a bear joint, drinking and smoking, and you want to share the gospel with them, and they showed interest, but they gave a condition that for them to listen to the gospel you want to preach, you must buy them beer and cigarettes. What can someone do in that situation? What should he do? Walk away. If that is the condition, they will listen to you. Dear sir, what is the spiritual implication of being a man with many wives? Go and buy our teaching some polygamy. Then you know the terrible danger behind it. Praise the Lord. I think we have to stop here so that we can do other things today. What can you do when you have a lying husband? Be praying for him. If he claims to be a Christian, it will change. Let's bow our heads, please. And I want you to talk to the Lord yourself. That this morning, meet me at the point of my need. This morning, locate me by your power. Talk to the Lord now. Let's rise up on our feet, please. The prayers I want you to pray now, they are prayers that this month needs. So for those who want to march forward in this month, it's better to pray these three prayers with all your heart. Can you shout this louder than anyone around you? The powers blocking my progress. Clear away in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and begin to declare that word. Particularly this month. Clear away in the name of Jesus. Jesus, then we pray. Say environmental wickedness. I am not your candidate. Can I hear you shouting this loud? That is somebody needs to shout this loud. Dad, in the name of Jesus. Baporia ne katenda rabo shente raba. In Jesus' name we pray. Say anything in my life. Serving as a ladder for affliction. Can I hear you say that? Can you say it again? Catch fire in the name of Jesus. The Bible says oppression shall be far from you. Destroy the ladder, destroy the ladder. Jesus name we pray now add this one and it's a song and sing it loud and believe the words you are singing in that song especially in a month like this sing it demonstrate it prophetically believe in the Lord as we are saying it as we are saying it so shall it be I am moving forward I am moving forward 
for the Lord is on the throne. I am moving forward. I am moving forward. I am moving forward. Hallelujah. 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 For the Lord. God bless you. This morning, in our school on Sunday, we're looking at the dangers, the dangers of lust, the dangers of lust. If there is any silent killer in the Bible, it is lust. Silent killer silent in the sense that you may not see it at all in the face but is doing an internal destruction this will lead us into three major scriptures for lovers of scripture and for lovers of heaven please take these three scriptures to heart whether you are a male or a female whether you are young or old this silent killer is why a lot of people will get to the gate of heaven and the gate will be shut and you say, but I didn't do anything. Yes, you did not do anything physically. But right there in the heart, lust has made you an offender. In James chapter 1, verse 14. This is a school, not preaching. So take your Bible and open up. James chapter 1, from verse 14. James 1, 14. Please listen to this deep words of scripture. Very, very deep words of scripture. James chapter 1, verse 14. It says this. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lusts and enticed. Every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lusts and enticed. That temptation that you are having, that thing that is seducing you, the reason he's able to do that to your life is because there is lust for that thing inside of you. That lust is a magnet and it's what draws people away and is enticed. All the, it's a mistake. It's a mistake. There is no mistake. There is lust inside. That lust is the inner zoo that is attracting other animals. So, I'm tempted, I'm tempted. There is no temptation, it's the lust in you that is drawing you into perdition. Verse 15. Then, when lust has conceived, that lust, when it has conceived, it will bring forth sin. And that sin, when it is finished, will bring forth death. So, everything starts from that lust. The lust conceives, Gives back to sin, and that sin will now bring death. So, a three chord circle lost, sin, death. Lost, sin, death. Lost, sin, death. Every man or woman is drawn away because of that lust in the heart. And you say, The woman was seducing me. No, it's the lust in you that drew you to it. I didn't know what you were doing before it happened. No, it's lost in you that is drawing. Let this be understandable. The danger of lust, you cannot read it on the face. Lost. You can't read it in the face. Many years ago, a preacher was preaching at the pulpit and he was talking about God's judgment. He was talking about hellfire. 
was explaining to people the dangers of living a loose life. As he preached, there was a young lady at the front seat crying bitterly. Oh, bitter cry. The cry was so bitter that after the sermon, the minister went to her. So, so okay, relax. Just confess your sins to the Lord and repent. Everything will be all right. The girl said, no, sir. I'm not crying because of what you are saying. What is making me cry? It is this. I was saying in my heart, but this preacher is handsome. He's very handsome. Oh, I wish that this man is my husband. So that's why I'm crying, sir. So you see, the lust will not show on the face, but right there inside the heart. This is why it is a silent killer. Meaning that many people are dead while they are walking about. Many men are dead. They are just moving about. Lost in the heart. A woman in this church said she was tired of all the messages we are preaching here. And said, ah, every time they ask us to repent. Every time they ask us to change. No, I don't need this kind of sermons. What I need is motivation. Motivation. So she took her husband away from here and they went to one church. I will not mention the name. She took her husband there. She sat down by the right like this. The husband sat beside her. There was a lady beside the husband. This skirt that that lady wore was almost on the same line with her underwear. Because the laps were outside. The sermon started. As the minister was preaching, something told his sister, look down. When she would look, she found that her husband's hand was on the lap of the girl. And it was massaging it. It was massaging it. The curious thing was that the guy that they were massaging her leg did not mind. She didn't remove the man's hand. It was the wife that now gave a blow. Gave a blow to the husband and said, remove your hand. By next Sunday she was back here. Praise the Lord. That's why we say there must be a difference between people who have just closed from a nightclub and they are going home and those who have closed from church. So loss is a very dangerous thing. I'm saying this with all the strength I have so that you can know now. You have to say that's lost. When it has conceived, it will give back to a baby called sin. That sin will now bring death. Meaning that once that loss is present and you don't deal with it at that level, it will suddenly give birth to a baby and the baby will bring death. Go to the book of Matthew, chapter 5. Jesus made this even more plain. Matthew chapter 5. Look at verse 27. It's good for all the men that are here to, to read this scripture now. So you can understand. Sometimes why you pray and heaven seems to be blocked. Or why you pray and God doesn't seem to be talking to you. Matthew chapter 5, verse 27. If you are there, say yes. Sisters, are you there? Brothers, are you there? Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time. Thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. You have committed the adultery already in your heart. Meaning that you may be on your seat and become a rapist. Although you are not touching anybody. In your heart you are doing it. You can't really rush at anybody, but in your heart, you are doing it. That is lust we're talking about. So Jesus is saying, that lust in your heart, although you have not carried out any physical activity, has made you liable for judgment. That as far as heaven is concerned, you're already guilty. And I don't normally misbehave. I only take occasional bribe. You are still guilty. Uh, it's true. I commit fornication. Though, but not with every girl. Out of 30 girls that I come across, I only desire two. I'm, sorry, I'm not really bad. Two over 30 is not bad. You are still guilty. Uh, I, don't, I don't sleep with every married woman. Only with those whose husbands do not love or care for. Not so bad after all. I care for them. I give them money. You are still guilty. Hey, I don't sleep with every man on the street. Only with those who need company and comfort. 
Eh, I only sleep with divorcees. You are still guilty. Eh, well, I have only four boyfriends. One rich sugar daddy. One rich bachelor. One penniless handsome bachelor. One average married man. You are still guilty. Eh, well, yeah, I know myself. I know myself. The day I want to stop drinking, I will stop. I don't drink much now. Only two bottles. At most five. But not more than seven. I don't drink much. Eh, well, I can't say I'm a liar. But I tell business lies. Or commercial lies. In this our business, you have to tell lies occasionally. So I don't tell lies all the time. So I'm a good man. Everyone say you are guilty. If you undress a woman in the laboratory of your heart, the Bible says you are a fornicator, you are an adulterer, you are a rapist. So a person could arrive at the gate of life and you are accused of fornication, of raping a woman. I say, but I didn't touch anybody, sir. I'm sorry. I say, but you undress the woman in the laboratory of your heart. The Bible says, being angry and having hatred is murder. So you read this scripture well. So when God judges sin, he judges your intentions. He judges your principles. He judges your motives. He judges your reasons. He judges your way of life. He judges your thought processes. He judges those secret lockings of your heart. He judges the longings of your heart. He judges the cravings of your heart. He judges the pinings of your heart. He doesn't just look at what your hand and legs are doing. He looks at the tablet of your heart. That's where we look. The Bible says no liar will enter into the kingdom of God. Whether you are a professional liar, occasional liar, commercial liar, Romantic liar, academic liar, husband liar, wife liar. When you ask your husband, you say, I, I, I swear, I have no cobalt. When you have money in your pocket. So this, all this kind of thing, that's what God will judge. Chapter 2, verse 15. First John 2, 15. First John 2, 15. Very clear scripture. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the man has only one sickness. The love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the loss of the flesh. This, that thing your flesh is asking you to do and you are doing it. The loss of the eyes. Those evil things your eyes are recording. And the pride of life. That better than thou attitude. It's not of the Father, but of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lost thereof. But he that doeth the will of God, abide there forever. Lost is the root that bears gall and bitterness. Lost is the reason why the practice of righteousness is so difficult for so many people. Lost. It's why many people enjoy sin more than righteousness. Lust is the foundational solution to the sin problem. Because once you deal with lust, sin will not come your way. Lust is the wicked blood running in your veins. Lust is that dark spot in your mind. Lust is that evil plant in the garden of your heart. Lust is the little foxes that spoil the vine. Lust is that seductive feeling in your emotions. Lust is the evil root in the garden of your heart. Lust is the wrong connection in the life wire of your spiritual life. The way you connect electricity and the connection is wrong, it sparks. Lust is that wrong connection in your heart. Lust is the silent killer that dismantles your inner anointing. Lust is the fuse cutter of divine power. Lust is the strange fire in your, in your spiritual life. Lust is the slow poison 
Loss is the mind polluter. It pollutes the mind of the people. Loss is a terrible destroyer. Terrible destroyer. And I want to let you turn, I want to let you understand that age is no barrier to loss sending you to hellfire. Go to hold young, new, lost, lost work in their lives. And it's a terrible matter when a man is controlled by loss and you don't deal with it. But know for sure that that loss will certainly have a baby, which is sin. And that sin will bring death. So loss is the mind polluter. Loss is what, what the Bible calls the death in the pot. Death is that clever, silent, giant killer. Lust is that power neutralizer. Thus is the paralyzer of spiritual power. It's the spiritual backbone breaker. Lust is the foundation of every sinful practice. Because before you begin to carry out a sinful activity, the loss for it has started in the heart. When loss is conceived, it will bring forth sin. And sin, when it has finished, will bring forth death. Check your heart this morning. Is it really right with God? Or is it filled with quietly, cleverly concealed loss? Loss must not be conceived because the baby born will be sin. Loss is so horrible, it trades with minors. To make a giant look like a dwarf. Loss draws people's heart away from God. Loss empowers sorrow. And it makes sorrow to manifest. This terrible thing is this. Loss can drain you of your common sense. Common sense is gone. I was here in my council room many years back. A 68-year-old bishop came and said he wanted to see me. I didn't know him. I was just wearing bishop attire. So they told me. So I said, okay. And this bishop came inside. And he said, uh, Dr. Luke, uh, good afternoon. Uh, I hear that you people pray here. Uh, I want you to give me some prayers that can deal with my wife, who is a witch. I said, uh, Bishop, why do you call her a witch? Uh, he said one day, Madame did not tell me she was coming to the office and she came to the office and caught me and my secretary. I said, caught you and your secretary. Doing what? So, ah, we were playing with each other. What play? This 68-year-old bishop was sleeping with his secretary in his office. And the wife, who did not announce she was coming, just came and found them. I said, then what happened? He said, when my wife uh, saw us, she now issued a curse that you this man, since this is what you are doing here, I decree that your manhood will not work again. Anytime you want to use it outside our home. I, I said then, so? I said, sir, since the day she said that, it has been so. The battery is dead. So that's why I'm calling her a witch. <laughs> And I said, Bishop, she's not a witch. She has just used the authority the Bible has given to her. And that you, at your age, you are supposed to be advising people like us. You are doing foolish things like this. So I told him off very well. And he too rose up in anger. I said, they have said so. I said, you are a strange man. I said, we don't have the kind of prayer you want to go away. Lost has dreamed his common sense. This person is a housemaid. Lost. Will drain the common sense of the man. Will go and sleep with the housemaid. This person is a secretary in the office. Lost. Drains the common sense. And it goes there. And beloved, this lost has converted useful men to sawdust. Let me tell all the men that are here one secret. If you have domestic wickedness, if there is domestic wickedness in your family, you have a problem with household witchcraft, and then you are sleeping around, let me tell you one secret. All those guests that are coming to you, that you are getting attracted to, they have been programmed by those wickedness to deal with you. Good, 
clean women don't sleep around. They also do it. They know what they are doing. They know they are hunters. But you may not understand what you are doing. Lust disables your ability to think properly. Lust deadens spiritual senses. That man may be here now. Sorry that I'm saying it. When he was in the world, he was going about with all kinds of women. All kinds of women. One day he was in the house of a strange woman. And that woman was serving him food as usual. But unlike before. Instead of the woman to dish the food from the kitchen, she brought the pot and was dishing from the pot. But her hand slipped and the pot fell down. And the soup poured on the floor. And right on the floor, there was woman's, a woman's pant. There was a pant inside the soup. The man saw the pant on the floor because of lust. He see hurt the soup. Lost and remove his brain. Remove his brain. They sent you to school to go and read. You know you are not ready to have a baby now. Now you are going to visit somebody who lives alone. Your lust does not allow your sense to think properly. And now the man has raped you. And now there is pregnancy. And now your parents will not know about it. And now you have bought the baby. And now there is blood on your head. In addition to the problem you are having before. Lost. Dead things are communication with the Holy Spirit. Lost deafens the ear of our spirit man to God. Lost bypasses the voices of scripture. Why the Bible will say, run for your life, run for your life, run for your life, run for your life. Lost will say, stay, stay, continue, drink more, eat more, drink more, eat more, kiss more, touch more, peck more, continue, continue. And you are hearing the voice of your conscience. You are going too far. The voice is saying you are going too far. You are going too far. You did not listen. You did not listen. A lot of young people, middle-aged men, even some old men, they are who good to pornography. They will just be looking at it. Looking at it. Looking at it. What is making it interesting to you? The lost in your heart. Will to God that you will cry out this morning. That the altar of lust in my mind should be destroyed by the armor of the Holy Ghost. Lust destroys the plan of God for your life. You could lust after the opposite sex, lust after alcohol, you could lust after clothes, you could lust after shoes, you could lust after all kinds of things. Lust punctures the project of God for your life. When as a man and as a woman, you say you want to marry and you have a list containing seven names, four names, the simple things that you have lost in your heart. Thus distracts us from divine objective. Lust has the power to disintegrate a man into a piece of bread. Loss is a silent destroyer. Loss is a burning and overpowering desire to satisfy your sexual appetite, to satisfy other things. Loss is the name of every wrong desire and every inordinate affection. Loss is a fleshly desire. The devil is the manufacturer of loss. And if you allow him to develop the negative in your mind, it will soon blow it to a picture. All sexual sins, whether it's homosexualism, whether it's lesbianism, whether it's pornography, whether it's seduction, whether it's allotry, whether it's prostitution, whether it's fornication, whether it's adultery, it is lust that pays way for them. Lust is the key that opens the door to all of them. Woe to God that there will be somebody here who will cry out with anger that I cannot continue like this. The altar of loss must be broken. Loss is the animal in us. It, it destroys the mind. Loss is that bait that Satan uses to draw us away from the things of God. Loss is that illusion, the counterfeit of what God wants from us. It says, when the loss is conceived, it gives back to sin. And sin, when it's full, will bring death. It is on record that over 75% of all internet users after 10 o'clock in the night, they are viewing pornography. And the largest age group is from 13 to 18. It's lost. Loss goes a step beyond desire. 
in that is a desire that is unlawful. Lust is a desire for something contrary to the will of God. It's an evil desire. Loss is yeah. not inborn. It's acquired. Loss is acquired in the spiritual realm. And it's, it manifests in the physical realm. All the masturbation, the root of it is lost. The loss will start with a desire. It will develop into a feeling. And then it will begin to scheme and seek to possess the person. Listen to this, beloved. A man who cannot handle lust before marriage will not be able to manage it after marriage. Lust destroys happy relationships. Lust is a wall between you and God. Lust is a spiritual stain. Pornography is an addiction. It's even more addictive than alcohol. Lust is the key that fits all of them. Lust is when you look in order to fulfill your evil desire. So you can see that it's a serious matter. It's not, this is not a day to come and deceive yourself. One day, there was a word of knowledge here, that there is a man here who has been sleeping with his secretary. Come out now so that we can pray for you. Because you have seven days to live. Because the secretary you are sleeping with is a marine queen and they have asked her to bring somebody for sacrifice. The thing will expire in seven days. Come out now. There was a man here was sitting beside his wife. He knew he was one. But because his wife was in the service, sitting beside the woman, he sat down. He did not come out. Within seven days, he was dead. He was here. So it's not a money to come and deceive yourself. Mountain of Fire is not an ordinary church. It's a place you make up your mind whether you want to come or you don't want to come. Are you here this morning? And you have violent body chemistry at the sight of opposite sex. It's a symptom of lust. Something is wrong. So, are you here? And you're talking to a woman. And your main organ is rising. While talking to the person, it's lost inside of you. Are you here this morning? You have immoral thoughts that refuse to go away. It's a symptom of lust. Are you here this morning? And you're a woman, you're feeling wet in the presence of opposite sex. And there is lust inside of you. Are you here? At night, alone on your bed, you have sexual fantasies. You're just thinking of this, thinking of that, thinking of sex all over in, on your bed. Symptom of lust. Are you here now? You use dolls, pillow, teddy bear, your cover to represent the opposite sex on your bed. That is lost inside of you. Are you here this morning? You are secretly admiring the body contour of the opposite sex. There is something inside. If you don't kill it, it will still have a baby and to bring death. Are you here this morning? You have an inward fire that's in inward sexual fire that you want to satisfy anyhow. Are you here this morning? And you have x ray eyes that imagines the nakedness of man or woman that is lost to you. Are you here this morning? Constant sexual dream, constant wet dreams is lost. Are you here this morning? You're watching pornography and you're whether full or partial, that is lost to you. Are you here this morning? You like to dress in a revealing way and you make lustful high contact, lustful signals. These are signals that something is wrong somewhere. Are you here this morning? You are the kind who will be spying on anybody who is committing fornication, anybody who is committing sin. We are reading sexual books, romantic books. You are masturbating. Are you here this morning? You are lusting after things that God says live alone. If you don't deal with that lust, it will give rise to a baby, and the baby will give rise to sin. And this is a very, very serious matter. I want you to understand this very, very well. The Lord brought you here so that He can prepare you for heaven. The Lord brought you here so that you can be a candidate of heaven. Loss is that intense desire to just satisfy what your flesh is saying. Just want to satisfy it. What your body is saying. Listen. There are only four places on earth where men pray hard and they listen hard. Four places on earth. Men, when they get there, they pray hard and they listen hard. Number one, the leprosy colony. If you have ever been to leprosy colony to minister, 
they listen hard, they pray hard. Because they have become social outcasts. Second is the prison yard. At the prison yard, you find men who listen hard, who pray hard. I'm yet to see prayer meetings as hard as the one in the prisons. Third place is men condemned to death. They pray hard, they listen hard. The fourth place is the cemetery at burial ceremonies. Why do men pray hard and listen hard in those places? It's because at those locations, the heart of man can no longer play games. There is no game play anymore. Everything is open. What do we do? How do we battle this strange power? Number one, surrender your life to Jesus. That is non negotiable. Number two, love God above all things. Love God above all things. Number three, destroy all the doors of loss in your life spiritual and physical. Destroy them. That is, destroy lustful literature. Destroy gifts by former girlfriend, former boyfriend. Burn the bridges behind you. Four. Regularly remind yourself that loss is a sin. It's a sin. Five. Proceed on deliverance as quickly as possible if you cannot control yourself. You are finding difficult to control your body. Six, stay busy and be careful of the possibility of falling. Be careful. Seven, spend as little time as possible in the presence of anyone whose presence makes you to lost. Stay as little time as possible. Eight, kill all the strain thoughts. Kill them, all those thoughts that are strain. Kill them. Nine, fill your mind with the thoughts of God. According to Philippians 4 8, whatever is pure, whatever is honest, think about all this. 10. Realize that God has provided a way for you to escape from every temptation. And the way to escape is to flee. You flee. Flee. 11. Do not put yourself in situations where you know temptation will be great. Don't put yourself in situations where you know if you go there, you will be tempted. 12. Never plan sin. Never make it easy to fall. Don't plan sin. Don't make it easy for the enemy to pull you down. 13. Do not be overconfident. Say, this cannot happen to me. I trust myself. It can't happen to me. That I trust myself is a statement of failure. 14. Take radical action against any form of impurity in your life. And 15, sanctify your environment or wherever you are where impure thoughts or feelings are harassing you. 16, scan the people around you. If someone is serving as access or a enhancer of lust in your environment, prayerfully seal off that access. Seal it off. 17. Practice self-discipline. 18. Make a lifelong commitment of studying, meditating, memorizing, applying scriptures. 19. Get married if you are of age instead of living in sin. And lastly, watch and pray. Watch and pray. It is the watching that comes first, not prayer. You watch and pray. And once you begin to watch things, then the Lord will begin to help you. I'm praying for somebody here that was so ever temple lost as built in your heart, that has shut heavens away from you. May that temple be destroyed this morning in the name of Jesus. Rise up on your feet now. And all eyes closed. Rise up on your feet. All eyes closed. Several years back, some of you must have heard me sharing this. This woman was dropping a son with the ALSEP at home. She goes to work. The ALSEP is a, is a male. 
she did not know that any time she goes to work, the baby begins to cry because of what this house does to the baby. And the neighbor kept reporting, your baby is always crying, your baby is always crying. Before they could describe what was happening, they found that this man was sleeping with the baby through the anus. By the time they would detect it, he had destroyed the anus of the baby. The elastic nature of that anus had been destroyed by this man. Everything started with lust. The man is in jail now. Close your eyes. If you are here this morning and you are not born again, you have not just surrendered your life to Jesus. Say what I'm going to say after me. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I come before you now. Lord Jesus, come into my life. Take control of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Beloved, when we were in junior Sunday school in those days, when I say prayer, they used to make us pray as little children. I never understood that prayer until I began to grow as a Christian. They would say, children, pray. Say, my father, break every idol in my heart. I say, small, but say, idol in our heart? There is no idol in my heart. What are you talking about? But looking back now, I was glad I prayed those prayers. Can you lay your hands on your chest? If you love your destiny, it's the time to cry to the heavens. Cry to the heavens. But before you do that, bow down your head. Begin to confess. Any sin of loss the enemy has used to kick your life that has pulled you down till now. Confess to the Lord. Tell the Lord you are sorry. Tell him you want to make a new beginning. People may not see you, but God knows you. And he sees your heart. I give you time to do that now. I give you time to do that. This is a very serious matter. Very serious matter. And as you lay your hands on your heart, and you are praying there, if you are here, and you know, you are addicted to masturbation. You are addicted to pornography. You are addicted to immorality. You are addicted to fornication. Don't deceive yourself. Wherever you are, you better get on your knees. Get on your knees and talk to the Lord seriously about it. To be a terrible disaster, to come to a service like this and you go home the same. The message here is for some people here who God wants to rescue. If they allow the Almighty to rescue them, lay your hand on your chest. If you want to get on your knees, get on your knees. The important thing is to be free. Jesus is here. His power is in this place. Rekira katenda. Amen. You will now lift up your voices and shout this louder than anyone around you. My father, break every idol of lust in my heart. For the Bible says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. For all the things that are in the world, the loss of the flesh, the loss of the eyes, the pride of life, they are not of the Father. For the world passes away and the loss thereof. But he that do the will of the Father shall abide for them. My Father! Break the idol of lust in my heart. In the name of Jesus, open your mouth and declare it. Break every idol of lust in my heart. Break them, break them, break them, break them. Jesus, Jesus. Amen. As we pray this second one, that young man over there, you are hooked to masturbation, hooked to pornography. That young man over there. You have been struggling to be free. But the more you try to set yourself free, the deeper you get. That young man, find a way to this altar and be on your knees so that God can deliver you today. Everybody will shout this loud and clear. I fire back. Every arrow of lust. Can you say it loud? 
Somebody needs to shout this louder than that. Somebody needs to shout that loud. Somebody needs to shout it louder. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and begin to declare it. Somebody is breaking through. Somebody is breaking through. That's the power of God is coming upon you from the top of your head to the sole of your feet. That's why Jesus brought you here. The power of God. In the name of Jesus. Move. In Jesus' name we pray. Those of you at this altar, right there where you are, begin to shake your head vigorously. As you shake your head vigorously, you are saying no to those powers. They will begin to release you. The power of God will go from the top of your head to the sole of your feet. Just shake it. That's right. That's the power of God. That's the power of God. That's the power of God. Yes. Shake it away. They're coming out. Yes. Yes. At the count of seven, the power of God will fall upon you where you are. And the yoke that has kept you in bondage will be broken to pieces. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Father, let your mercy and the power in the blood of Jesus cause great deliverance to happen upon these your children here in the name of Jesus receive the touch of the yoke breaking power of God you will not go back into your vomit in the name of Jesus right there where you are make a vow before the Lord Make your vow before the Lord. That beginning from today, the Egyptian forces you have been seeing, you shall see them no more. And that you will not go back to your vomit. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. You may go back to your seat now. Everybody will pray again one more time. Every load of iniquity suffocating my spirit man can I hear you say that loud? Clear the way in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, as we proceed into another week, lay your hands upon your people. I cover your family with the blood of Jesus. Every prayer request, O oh Lord, answer them by fire. Open our understanding. Lay your hands upon us. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Every agenda of darkness for any life here, let that agenda be scattered in the name of Jesus. Every agenda of sorrow for anyone here, let that agenda be scattered in the name of Jesus. I cover you with the blood of Jesus. Don't forget speaking word to the mountains prayer. Sick comes on Wednesday. It is a fasting program. You break after the program. And you come with a prayer sheet containing the mountains you want to move. Let us share the grace in fellowship. Sisters, wait for your meeting immediately. We close now. Amen. This is a prayer meeting organized by the Women Foundation. This is the first one in the year, and we shall be doing this one regularly. All eyes closed. The first power we want to address now. I want you to pray the way you've never prayed before at these meetings. We have seven things to deal with, and we need to take them one by one. You will shout this loud and clear. Don't let anybody's voice be louder than yours. 
said, My enemies shall die in my place. In the name of Jesus, open your mouth and begin to declare. Masika poli katenda raba. Open your mouth and say it. Something is happening over there. In Jesus' name we pray. So every power waiting to celebrate my obituary or my family members. Can I hear you shouting this loud? You are a liar. Die. In the name of Jesus. Ma pota satali kata. Somebody's breaking through. In Jesus name we pray. Any sickness in my body. Assigned to kill me. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. That's why you are here. The power of God. Begin to move. 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 In the name of Jesus. Receive your healing. Receive your healing. Receive the touch of the power of God. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus name we pray. Let that be silence now. I'm going to count seven from here. And when I count that seven, there are people in this meeting. The enemy has put things in your body that they want to use to take away your life. Immediately I say seven. Those things they are planted there. Whether you know about them or you don't know about them, they will begin to jump out and go back to their senders. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. They're going out. I decree upon your life that any power that wants to terminate your existence shall die. I decree upon your life that any monster that has swallowed your joy shall vomit it. They shall vomit it. They shall vomit it. They shall vomit it. In the name of Jesus. Your progress this year shall be greater than all the other progress you have made. In the name of Jesus. Set powers blocking my progress. You can mention your children, you can mention your husband, you can mention anything you want. And that progress of your children, progress of your husband, progress of your family. Powers blocking my progress. You are a liar. Die. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. That's why you are here. Papal Abakapata Sata. Rimase. Nikatenda Yabo Shantera Basanta. Aha. Aha. In Jesus' name we pray. Say, I was over my head. Open by fire in the name of Jesus. Command your heavens to open in Jesus' name. We pray. Are you tired? You go to the third section. This is firing back every arrow of the enemy. Say, arrows. 
fired against my family. Backfire! In the name of Jesus. This is not a money to keep quiet. In Jesus' name we pray. Arrows of sorrow. Backfire. In the name of Jesus. Oh yes. Continue, continue, continue. In Jesus' name we pray. We are moving on. Witchcraft forces gathered against me and my family. Kill yourselves. Can I hear you shouting that? Your voice is not loud enough. In the name of Jesus. Something is happening here. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. We have two more areas to battle. Now, we want to face the increased warfare when a good thing is coming. Say every battle battle. at the edge of my breakthroughs scatter in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Scatter. Scatter, 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 scatter. In Jesus' name we pray. Silence. Silence. There is a kind day here. You are in this meeting. But there is a heavy load upon your head. They are placed it there three years ago. Kind of right there where you are. There is an angel of God by your side. And the power of God is coming upon you. That yoke is broken completely. Those who have taken your name and the names of your children to native doctors, the thunder of God has scattered them now. Thank you, Jesus. And whether the enemy likes it or not, you shall sing your song and dance your dance. In the name of Jesus, you will trample upon serpent and scorpion of shame. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now, you will begin to pray this very aggressively. The more aggressively you pray it, the faster it will begin to happen. This is preventive prayer. It's also curative prayer. Shout this loud and clear. Cage of infirmity. Break in the name of Jesus. It's breaking. It's breaking. This is not a day to negotiate. It has to break. Masika Polika. In Jesus' name we pray. Say, I fire back every arrow of infirmity. I fire back. Every arrow of infirmity in the name of Jesus says Lord (laughs) 
Fire it back, fire it back. Fire it back. In Jesus' name we pray. I prophesy once again upon your life that those who hate you, they will celebrate with you. In the name of Jesus. Father, all the prayers your daughters are prayed there today, convert them to testimonies. In the name of Jesus. It is written that you to the hills will raise up your head. For there comes your help. Your help comes from the Lord who made them once tonight. Not suffer your feet to be moved. But if that keep it, you will not slumber. That keep it, you will not slumber nor sleep. The Lord shall keep your going and your coming out. The Lord shall keep you in all your ways. No evil shall befall you. Neither shall any play with your car. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In louder, amen. In louder, amen. In louder, amen. And let us share the grace in fellowship.